Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The Truth Hurts. I'm Andrew the Love Doctor and I specialize in breakups. We're catching people creeping lying and cheating in relationships. Today I'm going to be discussing red flag number 242. Withholding sex from a narcissist. Should you feel guilty for withholding sex from your partner? Hell no. Not if they're not doing the right thing. There are several reasons why people stop having sex with monsters and I'm going to break it down to you. One, they were disrespecting you. The objective of a relationship is to build, with both individuals gaining from one another's help. If one is capitalizing and the other is gaining nothing, that's the time to leave. Also, when you are right most of the time with states of affair, and your mate refuses to adhere to what you are saying, it's because they don't respect you. Solution? Leave them. And not wait for them to change, because they will never change. It's not within your power to change them. If you do, only misery awaits you in the future. This is a serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Also, if your mate don't respect you, their family won't respect you either. And you will constantly be disrespected within the confines of your own home. When you moved in with your mate, you was expecting a loving family atmosphere, which your monster knows nothing about. Now, when your family and friends came to visit you, they witnessed the cold atmosphere, which embarrassed you. Your shame caused your feelings to turn to disgust, then to borderline hate. People don't have sex with people they don't like. The only ones that don't understand this are narcissists. They feel all they have to do is provide sex in a relationship. They don't care if you don't like them. Just give them what they want. Who makes love to someone that don't respect them? Nobody. Two. Please watch Red Flag number 113. The whorish behavior of a narcissist. Today, ever since sex is easier to get, love is harder to find. Next, on, narcissists only want pleasure, not intimacy. When narcs have sex, they're actually masturbating on you. That's why they can tell you, and I quote, what we had was just sex. That's why today, it's easier to get a fuck than it is to get a kiss. You can't make this shit up. I swear to God, I'm not lying. I was on a park bench with someone 30 years ago. I asked her for a kiss. She said, I don't like kissing. After several attempts asking, she took my hand, placed it on a pussy, and said, here, play with my pussy. What the F? Red flag! If you catch yourself saying, what the F? Run! The pleasure of sex only lasts a few minutes. What do you do with the rest of your day? I don't talk about sex because it's not important to me. Don't get me wrong. I love sex more than the next person. The reality is, and don't let any man tell you different. The best sex back arching mind, numbing, toe curling here, pulling back. Breaking sex can only last 45 minutes. Tops. Now there are 24 hours in a day. What are you going to do for the rest of the 23 hours and 15 minutes that are left? Can you talk to the person without getting the headache? Can you stand around, stand being around this person? Would you be ashamed to bring this individual around your family and friends? These questions are far more important to answer than whether that person can make you scream. I can step on your foot and make you scream. 
Also, if sex is all you got to offer, then I don't want you. I don't want a relationship based on sex. If that's the case, then I'm not getting anything out the deal. Many times, they're not good at it. One time, I fell asleep on Judy while getting ahead. I had a better time with my hands than I did with her mouth. When I saw we had less in common, the more I started to see I was living a lie. And the less I wanted to touch her. Three. Cheating. I swear to God, Nox thinks this way. If they want sex and you turn them down, they'll get it from someone else. How compatible is that? When they cheat, there's always someone they know that encourages them to cheat. And the ones that encourage them to cheat are single. Prime example. Me going through Judy's laptop. Judy's Lilith's flying monkey of the second book. And trust me, you're going to love the ending on this one. Judy. Girl, Andrew and I only had sex one time this year. Are you serious? What the hell is wrong with him? I'm a very sexual person. He'd rather be on the internet than to fuck me. But that's okay. I found someone else to take care of that. Good. I will have gotten rid of any man that wasn't having sex with me in two or three days. I gotta have it. Make sure you bust that nut. I don't want Andrew to know because we are still living together and I don't want him to know what I'm doing. But I don't want him anymore. He won't hear from me. Don't worry about him. He'll be alright. I know that's right. Make sure you delete all our free emails when we are finished. Don't worry. I'm gonna do it. With everything I have done for Judy and her children, she had the nerve to allow people to chirp in her ear, telling her that I'm no good and cheat on me, and she listened to them. Why? All because I wasn't fucking her. All of this occurring because she wanted a cheap fuck. Not once was I important enough for her to consider. I wasn't having sex because I wanted her attention. To address the issues between us. And if we don't, it won't last between us. But instead of giving it to me, she gave it to someone else. Next day of conversations. I'm worried. Turnberger has been acting funny ever since Saturday. He called me yesterday. We only talked for 10 minutes. He wants me to come over in the evening. I text him various times throughout the day asking him when he wants me to show up. And he never responded. I'm seeing red flags all over the place. I hate men. She left the guy that loved her for someone that didn't give a damn about her. That's all. Knox M.O mode of operation. They believe they are missing out on something and disregard everything else. Four. You mean nothing to them. When they cheat and it doesn't work out with whomever they're cheating with, all of a sudden you're worth something and they want to come back. When they come back, they don't want to resolve the issue of why they left, cheated, they just want you to sweep it under the rug, never mention it again, have sex with them, and act as if nothing happened. Fuck that. When they left, they always claim they were with someone better than you. How can that be? After being with them for only one month. Nox know nothing of intimacy. Private closeness. 
fundamental mistakes like no boundaries, no future plans, just teenage sex, where people consider their partners as flavors of the month. They're happy occupying a spot instead of occupying a spot of their own. Life isn't lived moment to moment. That's a childish way of thinking. Lastly, flirting. Flirting is disrespectful. I'm a firm believer that flirting causes dilemmas in relationships, <coughs> such as jealousy from the other partner. When you are flirting, sometimes before you know it, you have caught feelings for the individual, which leads up to cheating, if the offer is accepted. Then you have the nerve to go back to your partner and say, Sorry, I didn't mean for it to happen. It just happened. Which is bullshit. Because if you weren't flirting, then it wouldn't have happened. You set yourself up. Why be in a relationship with someone if you're going to flirt? You need to be single. To me, this is the same scenario as a married man saying to his wife, I need to talk to someone. He should be talking to his wife. I'm sure he didn't tell his wife I'm going to go talk to another woman. Because he knows he's wrong. He knows his whole game plan was to kick it to the woman. The intent of flirtation is to get another person's attention. For romantic reasons. And if you're in a committed relationship, that's a problem. Today, relationships are in a crisis where we have a higher divorce rate and a lower marriage rate. So our relationships are already in some level of jeopardy. You add the issue of flirtation to it, and it just creates another problem for our relationships that weakens the union between the two people. Flirting becomes cheating the moment the first signal is sent to someone who is already in a committed relationship. Also, flirting becomes cheating when you are doing something your partner would not approve of. And you, and you cross that line from playfulness into lust. Even if the person doesn't respond, the fact that you sent it is an intent to betray the relationship of the person you are with. You have violated the commitment by seeking attention elsewhere. Emotional intimacy is much more threatening to a committed relationship than a physical intimacy. Prime example. How many of you were beaten up by a knock and you took them back? How many of you were cheated on by a knock and you immediately got rid of them? I know I'm not helping the situation by posting my issues on the internet but damn what is one supposed to do when your partner is not working it out with you everything that's being done wrong in your relationship is being approved by your partner who doesn't listen to you because they think they're right relationships is about building to have a comfortable life especially if you're in your midlife if you are not preparing for old age, you are wasting your life. Life lesson learned by me. Red flag! The more people you screw, the sooner you will find yourself by yourself. Run! Whatever love I had left was diminished greatly after I seen whom she was with. Intimacy is having a conversation and discussing passions, goals in life, politics, history. I guarantee if you stimulate a person's mind, you will never be sexless again. And the sex will even be better and greater. So no. If you are withholding sex for being disrespected, you are doing the right thing. Sex clouds your judgment. Red flag! Don't let good sex confuse your heart and make you think you are in love. Run!